Welcome back to Late in Space. I'm very excited to have my good friend Steve Ruiz. Uh, how are you this morning? Or hey, how's it going? Evening for me, but yeah. <laughs> Evening for you. Well, thanks for staying up. Um, I have had the good fortune of knowing you before you got famous. <laughs> and, <laughs> and actually hanging out in uh, the precise uh, office and studio that you're recording from right now. Congrats on Make It Real. C- congrats on TL Draw. Uh, I, you know, I, I think it's been something that's sort of years in the making, but uh, it's probably looks like overnight success to a lot of people. Yeah, thank you. I, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a funny story. Um, I don't know. Where, where, where should we jump into it? Well, I, I like to people give you a little background on, on the on the person. Um, you yeah. don't have a, a lot of detail on LinkedIn, just like myself. Um, we I just found out just before recording that you're also a, a late entrance into tech. Uh, so maybe just like you know, what's your background coming into something like TL Draw? Um, what makes you uh, so unique at at doing sort of creative collaborative experiences? Like, uh, um, you know, I've I know you, and I've I've uh, I've actually used TL Draw, so um, I have some appreciation for how hard this thing is. Yeah, like you said, I kind of came into this a little late and kind of came into it from a, a weird angle. I uh, My background is actually in, in like fine art and studio art. So um, I have my master's from University of Chicago in visual art and um, would write about contemporary art and, and you know put together exhibitions and, and do my own paintings and drawings. Uh, and that was back when I was living in Chicago. Um, and then when I moved over to the UK, kind of you know, got a new studio, kept that going. But when I turned 30, I kind of decided I should probably make some, make some money, uh, and, and kind of work with other people closer than I was at the time. Studio art is primarily a solo thing. Um, I'd always had kind of like an analytical background or kind of side to me. My day jobs were, you know, I was working for lawyers. I was doing this writing, um, like magazines and stuff. Um, and so when I, when I did that kind of that switch back, um, eventually to, to design and to product design, um, it, uh, I was also able to use a little bit of tech, like a tiny little bit of technical skill that I had had just building like WordPress websites for myself and other artists as, as portfolios, um, kind of take that and, and just some natural curiosity around the way that the products work, um, and kind of create a, a career, direction that was more around prototyping and like technical design and doing that um, kind of like doing the design on the bits of a product that that really couldn't be designed otherwise um, so the the interactive bits the the, the bits which are um, maybe more um, there's more questions about them it's, there's no clear answer in ter- terms of like how should this work you know in all those places you kind of have to build something um, in order to to figure out what you want to build, um, it turns out you know to to skip right to the end for a moment. Like uh, Canvas is just full of those types of problems, so it's no surprise that I ended up there. It's like kind of an extreme form of the same problem. Uh, but yeah, so I was working. This was back in like 2017, 2018, and uh, I used at the time a, a product called Framer. That was back when it was more of like a more of like a code product than than. Uh, what it is now, which is more of like a visual visual builder that that is kind of backed by code, um, and so I sort of just drilled into that. Every, it was cool. Uber was using it. No one knew how it worked. No one could use it. So I, I got good at it and got a lot of um, advancement, early traction, whatever in my career uh, based on that. But it also, you know, taught me to code, taught me to think about you know building things that other people are going to use. Uh, uh, taught me about. Kind of like the type of code that you write when you're in an exploratory phase rather than like in a ex- like execution, um, like production phase. And that, uh, yeah, carried, I actually ended up working for Framer. I did their education for a year, uh, which was very different than the type of product design that I was doing before that. Um, I did a lot of video tutorials and uh, writing and tweeting, trying to figure out some way to make technical design content interesting, you know, in, in little chunks that people could, uh, could consume. Uh, and I, I, I joke that like, they probably got less out of me in that job than I got out of the job itself. Like, because, um, yeah, I, I walked away from that. Um, not sure if I'd helped anyone really learn how to use framer, but I, I certainly learned how to, how to tweet. Um, <laughs> I learned how to record a good GIF and learned how to talk into a microphone and all that type of stuff. Um, 
And so in the next roles that I had, which were, I worked for a company called Play out in New York, who was also doing design tools. And I really wanted to work in design tools after that. Play's doing like a mobile, um, I guess now it's like just general iOS, Mac OS, um, platform specific design tools where you're, you're using actual elements from the, um, kind of widgets from that, that, um, component, tr- component collection. I don't know. Um, in your designs and kind of bringing that a lot closer to the end product. Um, and at the same time, I started getting into open source. I'd kind of done some popular open source before, but um, this was now 2019. It was it was locked down. I had a little bit more time. I also had a daughter, so not that much more time. Um, or I'm sorry, it was 2020. And uh, yeah, I guess that open source that I started getting into started swinging back towards some of my kind of artistic interests or studio interests and kind of visual interests. Those were the parts where I felt like the the problem space was was really underserved and really um it wasn't necessarily like technical problems that were really hard. It was more uh subjective problems where I think the thing that was lacking was the taste or the uh, opinions or the like the 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 feeling for what good solutions were. So the first kind of problem like this that I, I got into was uh, arrows. Like I had, you know, two boxes or two points arbitrarily po- placed. I want a good looking arrow, like a quote mark, like good looking arrow between the two. You know, well, that could be anything. That's not a math problem. It, maybe it, it involves some angles and linear geometry and vectors and all that. But it's like the good looking part really was the um, was just like my own taste and my own eye and like tons and tons of iterations and arrows are super tricky and there's a million ways for this, you know, edge cases when things are overlapping or things are too far away or too close and all this. Um, but I was working on this and I was working on this in public on Twitter, recording gifts of boxes and arrows kind of squishing together and all that. And I think people really liked that. Uh, and they liked kind of following me on this, uh, somewhat obsessive journey, which was, uh, technical, but it wasn't like, it wasn't like trying to crack an algorithm. It was like trying to, trying to figure out and identify the, the rules governing an aesthetic experience or an aesthetic, you know, um, thing, which was a a good looking arrow, uh, that became perfect arrows. And that was pretty popular, but the next one really is what, what kind of broke my popularity on, on Twitter or just in the space. And that was a project that ended up being called perfect freehand. This is um, a little hard to describe. If you've ever used like an iPad pencil or, or drew with like a stylus in Photoshop or something, um, like the harder you push, the thicker the line gets and the lighter you push, the thinner the line gets. It kind of is like this ink experience. Um, and that's, that, it's not a easy problem, but if you're doing it in a kind of a Photoshop style, like raster environment, you know, the solution is pretty straightforward. You just draw like uh, you interpolate like tons and tons and tons of whatever shape you're drawing in between each point that you've actually moved your mouse to. And you just change the size of that little stamp that you're making. And so it's like a little circle, slightly bigger circle, slightly bigger circle, slightly bigger circle, but they're all really tightly packed together. And so it looks like a kind of a, um, a line that's changing its width as it moves. Um, my, angle on this, uh, the reason why I spent so much time on it was that I wanted to do that using vectors. I wanted to get um, a bunch of points in and then like a polygon that sort of defined the outside of that shape coming out. Because I like to work in SVG and uh, and it turned out that this was like an insanely hard problem that no one had solved. Um, and if they have solved it, they certainly didn't open source it, but I couldn't find any good example of a variable width line that actually worked fast enough and uh, consistent enough, et cetera, for, for it to be digital ink. And so again, I did this in public, did this in, on Twitter, uh, like a million gifts of uh, lines that look terrible, but, you know, like slowly attracting more, uh, like getting closer to the, the solution, attracting more people who had solved this problem or tried to do this, or they wrote their PhD on ink. And let me tell you about, you know, how arcs work in this environment and all this stuff. Um, wow. And I, uh, yeah, it was, it was fantastic. Like I met so many good, you know, people who had like were experts on, on this or, or something like it. And, um, slowly we made a, 
uh, an alg- like a really, really good, tight um, little library for, for doing exactly what I wanted. Like, here are a bunch of mouse points or just arbitrary points. Like, give me back a polygon that surrounds them and let me essentially draw a line around the edge of that polygon, fill it in, and it'll look like ink. And um, so that was perfect freehand. And that's now used in like... Canva uses it, like Draw.io uses it, Excaldraw uses it. We use it at TealDraw all over the place. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's just like a significantly better than the next best solution in that space. And there really wasn't even any known solution in that space. So someday I'm going to be checking out at a hotel and see my own ink and, you know, a little iPad or something like that. Oh, uh, and so um, I might as well just kind of finish the the, the whole uh, origin story yeah, or something, for, but yeah. that that's kind of led right into Teal Draw, is that I had I'd integrated my ink into Excaladraw, and I you know spent time in that that code base, and I would also like created several like infinite canvas like tools to help me do build perfect freehand and visualize it and sort of um, you know do my ink and pan and zoom in and, and program against this thing, and so I had done including globs design, which I won't necessarily talk about but it's uh um it, yeah it's kind of like a weird experimental design tool <laughs> but anyway it was like it's an infinite canvas it was very much like you know framer figma etc and after doing excalidra and been working on these kind of projects that were in the same area i was like you know i maybe there's there's a market here for uh or, or not even a market it was just like i think the thing that i want to work on next is uh is like a general purpose kind of like whiteboard like engine uh mostly for myself i built globs but the only thing that you could put on the canvas in globs was a glob so i had all this like code and these solutions that i uh you know was like hanging around it could kind of see how i would adapt it um and so that's what i started doing and that was the next story that i was kind of telling on twitter is that like okay here's how selection works in something like figma or or something like miro or framer or sketch these uh these kind of here like not um heuristics these sort of conventions that are in part of this really complicated thing called like the infinite canvas um you know going all the way back to whatever uh, flash and before then you know adobe illustrator and before then all the way back um and they're all pretty consistent between products like if you're making a, a canvas this way you have to kind of do them all like your undo redo should work in a specific way your uh selection should work in a specific way like you know the camera position and how the camera moves should work in a you know a certain way all the modifier like option drag to clone and I mean, all of those became their little vignettes of uh of, of how i was building this thing uh this was now like spring of 2021 and i had uh everyone from any infinite canvas related creative product kind of like in my inbox being like, Hey, can you come work for us? You know, like, let's talk, let's do this. <laughs> and so I was either going to go work for Figma or Adobe. Uh, and, uh, I ended up going with Adobe in part because I think fig gem had just come out and, uh, and the, the team at, at, uh, Figma were like, well, this, this is competitive with, with fig gem. I'm like, this thing is like nothing. It's like a little open source, you know, uh, it's like no one uses this it's just me trying to get to 10,000 Twitter followers uh, but you know it's mine so no so I went with Adobe <laughs> and I told but I told them I'm like uh, I don't want to start for six months like this is actually a pretty fun project for me I want to get it out of my system uh, you know let me start in January and, and just work on this and so they said yes and I you know quit my uh, working with play uh, and and said, I'm going to go work on this, this little open source thing for, for six months. I have some, you know, contracting money in the bank. Let's drain the, the company account and, and do this. That's not what happened. Uh, the, um, the, the, uh, like I went full time from a Wednesday on Thursday. I had a, uh, a very large communications company, um, say, Hey, we're moving our, um, a whiteboard that we've designed for specific touchscreen devices. We're moving that into the browser. Uh, it turns out people want to use the whiteboard on their phones and on their laptops and all that, like like they do with Miro. And so we need to make this thing that we wrote in C++ to be highly performant on these, you know, kind of tiny microcomputers that were part of these interactive touchscreen TVs. We have to w- make this work on the web, and we don't think it's going to be good enough. We have to build from scratch. We don't have the team. Can we just build on what you're building? 
at the time, this thing wasn't open source. It was just sort of, but it was getting there. And I'm like, uh, yeah, sure. Like, just give me like $75,000. I'll let you see the source code. Just, you know, don't, I don't want to talk to you very often. You know, <laughs> like I'm not working for you. I never want to see your code, but you can look at mine. Um, and they said yes to that. And so I was, you know, funded for those, those first six months. Uh, and I got to work on this, uh, nice. you know, without having to feel bad about it. Uh, and I'd also opened up, uh, eventually opened up Teal Draw to be, um, like sponsorware that if you were sponsoring me on GitHub, you could, you could access it, you know, in its kind of primitive state, uh, on tealdraw.com and it had like a couple hundred people join that way and, and sponsor me. So at, at one point, like my sponsorship was, you know, over $5,000 a month, which is not massive money, but it's like, I wasn't doing anything different. So it was pretty good as a kind of a passive thing. Uh, anyway, I shipped it at the end of November, uh, 2021. And it was, uh, very popular. I had just open source everything. I was just like, you know, the tealjar.com app, the library, the canvas, and, you know, I was organized in a certain way. Um, I just made it all public. Everything was MIT. You know, let's just, let's just throw this out into the world and, and see where it goes. Uh, well, it, it went pretty far. It was like number one on Hacker News for a while. It was like the top trending repo on GitHub. Um, a lot of people, like 40,000 people showed up at tealdraw.com to use it, um, on that launch date, which was all good. Like so far, this was all within my same narrative of, okay, this is cool. I'll make this and then I'll go do something else afterwards. The, uh, the thing that really surprised me was how many teams wanted to build on this. And they weren't like, they weren't building whiteboards. They weren't like Miro competitors or Figma competitors. They were just like l apps that wouldn't, you wouldn't expect to have infinite canvases inside of them. Uh, but, and, and they wouldn't have built it except that I had suddenly made this very easy and I had suddenly shrunk the, the development time of this like whiteboard like feature in their product from like three years and three people to three weeks and one person. Um, and not even one person, just like, you know, uh, no new developers, no new team, no new graphics experts, no, 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 like computational geometry guys. Like, you know, we can do this. We, the canvas itself is like react all the way down. So even if you wanted to customize it, you'd just be writing react components and then a little bit more code on top. It got like, I was totally overwhelmed by, inbound from companies who are like, I, I want to build this or I want to acquire you or I want to, you know, um, I want you to build something for me or, you know, I want this in my app. You know, how, how do you help me? How, how can I do this? And, um, and people were shipping things also like within two weeks, three weeks, like, like production ready, like people had taken this and run with it. And so the, the story that I started to get around teal draw was that like, okay, well, this is, this is a cool little whiteboard, but it's also a, kind of like filling a gap that no one knew was there, which was that like, um, in the same way that like Mapbox or Google Maps, you know, provide maps for apps that would definitely not build maps themselves. Like maps are in insanely hard. Like your little local food delivery app, like wouldn't just wouldn't have a map in it, you know, like easy. Uh, but it is a value add if they can have it in there, then absolutely it is a value add. Uh, it's just completely impractical to do themselves. And, what I learned talking to folks was that like every PM had used Miro or used Figma or used, um, you know, one of these other collaborative tools. Uh, and every creative product person was like, well, this is fun. Collaboration is fun. This canvas thing is pretty cool. Like, uh, why don't we do, uh, why don't we, why can't we put our information on, uh, you know, why, why can't we put our CRM on the, the canvas or why can't we do our sales stuff here? Like we're already kind of using Miro for this. Like, why don't we give, why couldn't we give this to our customers as well? Like, why don't we build a product around this? Um, and it was just a technical no until, you know, November 24th, 2021, when suddenly it was like a technical maybe. Uh, and yeah, there was, there was absolutely demand. So hence the, this, you know, I had to call Adobe and say, no, I'm not going to come in on Monday. Like it turned out that the best possible outcome of this happened. And, uh, there's actually a, a company here. Uh, and then I went out and I raised a seed round from Lux in New York and Amplify in California and a whole bunch of really great angels. Um, you know, on the story of, yeah, this is, this is cool. It's good app feels good. 
companies want it. And, you know, by then I had re- um, had almost $200,000 of, of sponsorship, you know, and people were just signing up and signing up because there was no way to even be a customer. Um, like sponsorship, sponsorship. And, uh, but also, Wait, yeah, you're it's not a massive 200, you're not saying 200 K a month. That's no, no, no. But, but like, I mean, uh, I had totally. had, uh, up to then, uh, the amount of sponsorship that I had received was around two hundred thousand um, dollars, okay. and I think some of the recurring stuff was like, uh, like five thousand a month. But yeah. yeah, like it was, uh, which is uh, in in the top echelon, a lot. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Answers. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, certainly the, uh, but yeah, the, and just the amount of like kind of validation that had come in around this was like more than, more than usual. Uh, so race company or race around put together a team here in London and uh basically had just been building this this whiteboard SDK since then you know we we reconfigured the project around okay we're going to be building this not necessarily for end users but for for teams to use as kind of an infrastructure product a developer product something closer to mapbox um and uh you know we were making demos to kind of like show different ways that it could be used uh, certainly the collaboration thing is, is a big one, but the fact that you could put anything on the canvas that you can put on a website, um, just because it is a, it is a web, like all HTML, CSS all the way down. Um, and that was going really well. It was already a good story. Uh, and then, uh, I just raised like a 2 million extension for the company while I was on the, the final pitch for, for that, um, the, the dev day was happening at OpenAI. And in the morning, I woke up and uh, I was getting all this kind of you know, action on Twitter because uh, a developer at Figma had used Teal Draw to make this little demo where you could draw a website, click a button, and get back a, uh, a big pop up that had your, your website in there. It was like a prompt, like, uh, you know, hey, you're, uh, you're a developer. You just got this, this uh, wireframe from your designer. Can you give it back as a single page HTML file? Um, and, uh, and it would do it and it could do it. And then you could show that website to, to whoever is using the app. Um, and we took that and we're like, wow, you could do so much more with this. Like, like with teal draw, just like it's, it's only scratching the the surface of the, the type of integration that you could do. So again, we had just finished the race. Pressure was off a little bit. It was kind of getting towards the end of the year. I was like, all right, let's, let's just take this and have some fun. Let's make some some viral shit. Maybe we'll get like 200 likes or something like that. Uh, and it exploded. Um, it was like, I think we're at like, for this this month, last 30 days, like 22 million views or something like that. It's just like, it was Kanye West numbers. It was, it was really, really, really popular for a couple of days. If you're on Twitter and at all technical, you might have just seen a ton of Teal Draw stuff on your timeline <laughs> or about two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Uh, well, so yeah, that, that, that kind of brings us up almost to today. Um, you just released something two hours ago, which, which we'll talk about. <laughs> yeah, we um, <laughs> but maybe, maybe this will bring a good time to bring up the, the screens. Um, you know, for those who, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Audio, let me, let me share. Yeah. So we are, I, uh, uh, we're recording video as well. You can jump over to the YouTube to see, uh, stuff, but, uh, this is an yeah. inherently visual podcast. So we have to <laughs> show stuff. On okay. The um, the, yeah. the, the incremental thing I got from your blog post, so you, you did do a write-up, which thank you for that, because I actually didn't know that you did a write-up. Um, it's, it was just drawn up oh, on yeah. all the videos. Um, uh, it, it, this is the power of open source, right? That someone else had the idea. You weren't even focused on dev day. Uh, someone else had the mm-hmm. idea uh, and just like, you know, made it without your permission or, or uh, you know, talking with you. And then the idea could spread back to you and you could run with it. Yeah, exactly. And uh we had made a lot of the bits and pieces like in place already based on, yeah. you know, I mean, it's, it's well documented or <laughs> it's documented. Uh, it's it, documented. You know, it has tons of examples. <laughs> <laughs> tons of examples <laughs> and all that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's, uh, uh, it's not, I mean, it's a big library as far as an open source library goes, but it's, uh, it is, yeah, you, you can work with it. Um, and once this thing got popular, uh, like the, f- the first thing we did was create like a starter kit so that someone could take it and like run with it. Yeah. Um, so yeah. this is, this is normal teal draw where, yeah, you can, um, you know, you can draw, you can whatever, move things around. It, it works if you, if you've used Figma, if you've or- used, um, Miro, it's, it's kind of, kind of familiar to that. Um, 
And you can put pretty much anything on this canvas that you want, like YouTube links, uh, et cetera, just because it is, uh, um, I always have to remember to, to open this, uh, open YouTube in a, um, incognito in, yeah. in a, uh, incognito window so that people don't see my embarrassing, uh, <laughs> interests here. So yeah, because like, because this canvas is HTML and CSS and like divs and stuff all the way down, you can put things like YouTube videos on there. You can even make them play. Um, because again, like anything you can do in a website, you can do on, on Teal Draws Canvas. What's fun is because it is a canvas all the way down, you can also like draw on top uh, and like do the kind of canvas manipulation stuff that you might do with normal shapes, but also with this type of content. Um, so that ended up becoming like a big part of why Make It Real uh, got kind of kind of popular. So anyway, I'll show you Make It Real now. Um, this was a a hastily built uh, layer on top of the the kind of teal draw engine, the SDK that we we send out. And the idea here is that you can make a wireframe, and we're going to send it to uh, GPT four with Vision with like a prompt, like much like the original one that that um, Sawyer Hood had come up with, which is you are a, a web developer, you work with designers, they give you wireframes and notes and screenshots and all sorts of stuff. Could be anything. Um, your job is to come back with a single page uh, or a single HTML file that has all the styles, all the um, JavaScript, uh, all the markup necessary in order to make uh, a real working prototype based on on what you've been sent. It also has you know slight emotional manipulation, like you love your designers and you want them to be happy, and like <laughs> the the better your prototype is, the happier they are, and all oh, that. Oh, in the prompt, but the uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's oh, again, it's open source. You can read read the prompt. It's kind of a, a funny one. Um, <laughs> but we do we do some other tricks that I'll like. For example, the um, well, we'll have a second as I do this. So you select something like this, you click the make real button, and you get back a little. Uh, waiting box we've we've considered running ads or uh, <laughs> like in this, ah. in this uh, waiting moment but no i don't know it's you could. maybe like a kind of zelda style like tips you know tips and tricks like here's here's different ways you can yeah. you can do um but the uh yeah for example like we also send it i mean this is part of the joy of like a multimodal prompt is we send it the photo which kind of looks like the same as if you had uh, done a copy and paste thing so yep. like an image uh, and you, you, you as have well all as this all the text. functionality worked out prior, yeah. you know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's that's what I find so poetic about this that you were just ready. <laughs> yeah, it's like it, it really. I mean, it it feels like we had gone off in this like this very you know as as collaboration and AI and stuff was going in one direction, we kind of just went off in our own weird like, hey, the world is really going to need a whiteboard at some point uh, direction, and then. And then it just, they kind of met us where we were at. Um, and then we've been able to just be like, show up, like show up on day one of this new world of possibility with like the thing that like, if I hadn't spent the last two years building this, I would spend the next two years building this. Like it, it is the right yeah. product for this type of, uh, type of feature. 100%. So anyway, they give us back a, a HTML. We stick it into an iframe. Put that onto the canvas, just like we did with that YouTube link, and I can uh, I can interact with it. So it should be going from orange to pink, uh, orange to pink. Hey, it got hey. it right. It's given us a hex code. I can click the hex code, uh, and it gives me an, uh, you know it's YouTube links, uh, etc. Just because it is, uh, um, I always incredible. have to remember to to open this uh, open YouTube in a um, way that. In, in something like V0 or, or some of these other um, kind of prompting environments, like the only way for you to then make this better, uh, well, maybe you can do this with ChatGPT or something and you could you could write like, oh, actually, you know, uh, instead of, um, or like you, you missed the labels, like it, it should say orange and pink, yeah. you know, on, on yeah. top of this thing. Uh, and, and it doesn't. So you could go back here and like, you know, make, make sure that this is... Uh, <laughs> whatever you could change the input but because this is teal drawn because you can draw on top of this stuff you could um also you know right on top like yeah. you could kind of modify this uh and maybe even give it so the same type of markup that you would give to um uh a designer 
you know, a, a designer or something like that, you know, and draw some arrows or maybe paste in a screenshot and say, Hey, make it look more stylistically close to this other thing. Um, and I'll, I'll say this as well. Um, I'll say like full width, uh, for that, Ooh. for that button and, uh, anything else that we, well, let's just see what it does. Um, and then what you do is you select, you, you select the, the, the website that they gave you back, the previous result, along with all this markup, and you use that as the new input. And so that's going to give you uh, something kind of like, yeah, it's going to give you an image that looks like this that you've now sent. But we've also kind of tweaked the prompt a little bit when you when you do include a, uh, a previous result and say like, hey, this, mm. you know, the, the, uh, the wireframes coming back are... Uh, annotations or markup based on, um, on what you sent before. And there, there you go. So now we have a new prompt, uh, that sure enough, the, the labels are there. <laughs> uh, you know, it still works just like before. The button is full width and, uh, and, you know, it still works just the same. So we send it back again. We send it the image. We send it the text, uh, uh, the, the prompt. Uh, we also send it all of the text items themselves separately because ChatGPT is not really great with uh with recognizing text so we say like oh by the way your vision's not so good so we've we've ensured to have our copywriter you know list out all the the copy that you can use i think we even sent it back the html that they used for the 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 previous result um so we just dump like as much information as possible at, at this uh the the gpt4 with vision uh and that's how you're able to to get these sort of iterative results and the it it is it is like legitimately good uh to, <laughs> like it it feels like work it feels like like you're actually doing stuff when you're iterating through this way and and slowly shaping and adding complexity and doing step by step uh you know as you're you're you're, you're building something um and when you're done you can uh you know copy a link to that and and open that in a new tab like we we host it it's there forever you can you can bookmark this if if you really just needed a uh slider between orange and pink um <laughs> well now you have one you 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 know whether you could code it or not or you maybe not worth building or using a no code tool to build but you know we just made that in 5 minutes um if you are more on the codey side and you want to use this as a kind of a foundation uh of of a real project or maybe just to like see how it like well how did how did how does that actually work uh, you can open it up in Stack Blitz or uh, Code Sandbox. I think tomorrow we'll have Replit. Uh, and yeah, see all the code, see what ChatGPT came up with and, um, and kind of, uh, use it or adapt it or, you know, keep it going or, or do whatever you want with it. But, um, yeah, cause it is, it is like, uh, it is real and <laughs> yeah. You make real. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting that you can also, I've seen some of your other demos. Uh, it looks like you're, you're about to move us on to another. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to grab a couple of the, the ones that I have showed before. Um, this one's a really interesting one because it is, uh, okay. So what's on the screen now, just to, um, to kind of, uh, narrate, describe it is, is I have a, uh, I have a drawing of a stop like a kitchen timer, you know, where you can add a minute, add a second, you know, start or stop the timer or, or reset the timer. Um, and then next to it, I also have a state chart, like state machine describing, uh, the three states of the, the timer start st or uh, stopped running or complete. And like what each one of those, uh, buttons could, should do in terms of transitions or, or changing the state. I think you could hand this to pretty much any designer or developer and get back, uh, you yeah. know, a, a working result. Like it's fully, fully specced, sort of, sort of. Um, but what, what you we can know, do with friend, this, uh, David, David Kofid <clears throat> might say, yeah, uh, develop a state chart first and then, you know, plug it into it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and what, what's cool this way is that you can, uh, well, let's do a couple of things in, in parallel. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I am just going to make a box over here and I'm going to say, uh, kitchen timer. Right in the middle of the box, and and this is going to be the only prompt that I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna give it. I'm just gonna click okay. make real on just the the kitchen timer box. Yeah, sometimes you see with these multimodal prompting, like uh, um, 
like someone will draw a calculator, like in, in a lot of complexity and, and say, you know, make this, make this real. And sure enough, you get back like a really complex full calculator. Uh, but if you did the same thing and you just said empty box, but just the word calculator, it would give you back the same thing is that it knows what a calculator looks like uh, <laughs> and it knows how it works and all that. So next let's also give it the, uh, just the, the user interface, like without the state chart, we'll, we'll leave the state chart out, uh, but we'll do just the user interface. Um, and then we'll do just the state chart, you know, and say, Hey, make this real. Uh, and then we'll do, um, both the state chart and the UI. So we have four different prompts, um, with, uh, four potential different results based on, you know, variations of the same, same input. So first off our kitchen timer, where all we did was we, we sent it a box with the word kitchen timer. Uh, it has, I don't know what this box is for, but we have a time. We have start, stop and reset. I can double click in, I can click start. Uh, it doesn't do anything. Well, what is this? Oh, whoa, this is that. <laughs> if this, okay, well, if the oh, number is there, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, then it'll, it'll, it'll stop. If I stop it, it goes, it stops. I can start it. It'll keep going again. Okay. And I can reset it. And there we go. The only weird thing is that uh, it's, it works. it's, uh, yeah, it has a, a, a number input field for the number of seconds that I can, I can yeah. type out. But yeah, you know what? In a pinch, in a pinch, I'll take it if I really need it just to, to count 60 seconds <laughs> or something. Uh, next, we have the input where, uh, or the result where the input was just my drawing of a kitchen timer. I didn't tell it it was a kitchen timer. I didn't send it the words kitchen timer, and I didn't tell it how it should work, but it did produce something that kind of looks the same. Uh, let's see if it works. So I'm going to click minute, second, start, reset, no. So unfortunately, uh, it did not make any uh, working UI, although it did, you know, put the buttons in the right place or something like that. Mm. Uh, Maybe it so over-focuses on the UI because you you told it. You, you just, that's all you gave it, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there is in the prompt kind of language around like, you use what you know about the way that applications work in order to sort of fill in the blanks here in terms of the right. uh, behavior and all that. But let, let's go to the next one. This one is where we only sent it the state chart. Uh, there's also something in the prompt that says, like, if it's red, it's not part of the UI. Like, if it's red, then, like, treat that as an annotation rather than, a, like, a, a, a thing that you should should actually make. Uh, okay. So this time, it, it actually looks a lot like the previous one, uh, but it does have these um, minute, second buttons. Oh, weird. It has plus and minus for minute, minute seconds. Uh, <laughs> and it also has this like stopped state written at the bottom. So there's four buttons, you know, minus minute, minus second, plus minute, plus second. And then there starts, uh, start and reset. So does it work? I can add a minute. I can also subtract a minute. All right. I can Honestly, add a second. I can smart. also, yeah. And if I press start, we're now in the running state. Uh, unfortunately, it's going up rather than down uh, <laughs> and I, and I can reset it and, and okay. Uh, I've, I'm just curious if I, if I do give it a, an additional prompt here and I say like, uh, uh, this should count down, not up, uh, and just kind of do an arrow towards the start yeah. button here. Let me, let me see if that, uh, that'll make a real one. But, and then finally we look at the other example, which is where we sent the state chart and the UI we get something that looks much, much more like our user interface. The question is, does it work? Yes, it does. Uh, perfect. I can stop it. I can Amazing. start it. Yep. That's a I can reset time. it. Wonderful. Uh, and in this case, yeah, my, 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 <laughs> my feedback was accepted. I, I went back to the one where I'd, I'd asked it to count down and not up. And it all looks the same, but now it's counting down. So I think for folks, especially who have like, uh, who have worked in design and who have worked in sort of like user experience design in particular, like this should feel pretty familiar of, of kind of sketching out and trying to do your best to specify like what it is you want and see what you get back from your designers. You see what you get back from your developer. Um, but having like a, a environment in which to have that, like 
game loop, that like iteration cycle uh, alone and, and instantaneous and essentially free uh, is really, really wild. And uh, you end up spending a lot of time kind of like uh, not only getting into the head of the, the AI and sort of being like, okay, well, why are they getting confused? You know, what am I sending that is confusing? How do I send more information in order to like produce a better result? Uh, but also it really forces you to clarify your own expectations of like somewhere up here, I have a, uh, uh, a drag and drop list, you know, where you can drag list items between. And like, I started working on this and started specking it out. I was like, man, this is like actually like not only really hard to, um, like to produce a good result, but it's also like just really hard to describe is that like the failure was really on, on my end for just not knowing how to get the information in there because I didn't actually know how this thing should work. Um, but yeah, but you know, I could figure it out. I, I have an environment in which to figure that out. It's fun. That's amazing. Uh, I'm still processing. Oh, you have a picture of a, yeah. a, a Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. So this is, this is kind of, I know I like, uh, slightly obnoxious, but, uh, during this, ma- like, cause this thing went massively popular on, on Twitter. Uh, uh, yeah, like thousands of retweets type of level. Um, and there, there were some folks who like were subtweeting it about like, you know, get over it. It's just a wireframing or no code tool or something like that. Uh, one guy did say like, you know, I prefer to, to wireframe like the old fashioned way with pen and pe- paper. And, uh, I was like, oh yeah, no, that, that works too. I like this works with screenshots. I can just take the screenshot here of, you know, that the, the dude posted of, of the, uh, the, the drawing that he had made, you know, it's not even like a good photo. There's a pen, you know, across one of the screens, et cetera. But if you just give that with no other information, uh, to like as a prompt, uh, you get back a, a pretty good result. Like it, uh, loading right now but uh i've done this before and yeah like you get back (laughs) um you know just from this like photo of a of a piece of paper on the 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 guy's desk you know you have a um like not not completely arbitrary uh result like working website here um that was that was that was inferred from just that picture with no other input, not not even like titles or anything else, and of course it's like re- responsive and and all this stuff, uh, <laughs> and so the idea of like yeah like our tools yes I've I've worked really hard to make all of our shapes you know really good and our arrows obsessively good and and all this stuff but like the fun of the infinite canvas and teal draw in particular is that you could just dump like whatever you want onto the canvas screenshots text images other websites, uh, sticky notes, all that stuff. And, uh, the, the, the model, even as something that was in preview, like the very, very first sort of multimodal, um, model, uh, can do a really good job at just taking all that stuff as the input. And, um, and yeah, like, so we accidentally made a really, really good visual multimodal prompting, uh, uh application environments or or user experience environment i'm not even sure what we're going to call this thing (laughs) it's a tl draw uh uh, you you also had a you know pre-show prep you also talked about parallel prompting is that basically just uh prompting and then moving on to something else is is that is that what yeah that's kind of what we did up here with the uh the stopwatches the fact that we could get multiple prompts going at the same time and like arrange them spatially. Uh, and um, people have done this also with, with imagery uh, to say, okay, well here are, we're going to use Dolly. We're going to kind of like make a tree of prompts uh, as you go, you know, different iterations based on um, which, whatever you make four iterations, you pick your favorite one, you keep going kind of like what you do in mid journey, but to have that spatial and to have that like uh, arranged on a canvas so that it actually can make sense to you. And you can kind of look back and follow it, follow forward that like, I don't know, like whiteboards, infinite canvas stuff is just really good for a lot of things. Um, and, uh, so organizing like a whole bunch of different content that is, uh, irregular or ephemeral or, um, 
or has a kind of like ad hoc meaning configuration, like, you know, things that are next to each other or things that are in a grid, or in this case, you know, uh, just even what we're, what we have here for what we did with the stopwatch, like there's an implicit meaning of like the, okay, the source is on the left, the result is on the right and any further iterations are further on the right. Right. Like there, we, we didn't put that into a data model. We didn't structure that in any way. It doesn't actually, that meaning relationship doesn't really exist in any part of the product. It just exists to us because we, that we can make sense of it. Um, and yeah. So for, for this type of thing, not only is it cool that now a, a model can make sense of it as well, but, uh, but yeah, for, for organizing, uh, complex iterations of imagery, complex iterations of, of, of outputs, et cetera. Like, yeah, the canvas is a place. Uh, like I really do believe that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, that's, that's, that's really incredible. I, I, it's also, it's a little, you know, I, I think a, a few developers are kind of scared, uh, about, uh, you know, how much of this, uh, their jobs, uh, this does, obviously, uh, there's a lot more that they can't do. Yeah. So the, the, Will this take my job? Story is is interesting. I, I mean, I'm not actually concerned, but I'm, I'm curious. Yeah. <laughs> what, uh, um, I, I think this augments. Like, uh, my actually, my concern as a developer is that this is good, but not good enough. You know, like it's mm. good for throwaway UI, uh, but I, would I actually export the code and take that code? Um, I don't know. Uh, it, it looks like uh, your first MVP was just HTML files, which. You know, if it's a single HTML file, it can it can have some JS and some CSS. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I saw some problems with layout uh, in there, which I don't oh, know how sure. good it is at layout. Uh, it's it looks like you could just prompt it for Tailwind if you want Tailwind. Uh, I assume it can generate React. Uh, I, I don't know what what are the limitations of this thing. Well, there's there's the limitations that are in that particular demo, which is that like well, it couldn't do React because it needs to just be a single compiled thing. Uh, you can't do any multi-page stuff or, or anything like that. But that's more of like how we're structuring the uh, the project rather than like a specific requirement of of the project itself. The I mean, we've talked about having well, there's there's two kind of things. There's one is like how big is the input window and how big is the output window or something. Uh, so in theory, you could have uh, the input be here's a entire full stack react application uh together with all my ui and all this all my components etc and here is a screenshot that i took of the landing page where the menu uh is in the wrong spot you know and i'm, I'm gonna annotate that with some arrows and some text in order to say like here's what i where i want it to be or here's what i want etc and for the output to be um you know, a diff that I can apply to my code base, like produce the, 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 the get the, like basically like produce the commit, um, that would change this and have that commit be against multiple files and, and, and et cetera, um, in order to, to have potentially like a, a solution that is just uh, like ready to go applicable, like a patch or a, a, a PR that you could make. Um, there really isn't any, any any limit in that, and we've seen with Copilot, etc. The challenge is more on the input side than the the output side. <laughs> like, uh, like absolutely, you could figure out a way for this thing to spit out like a, a working iOS app or something like that. Uh, the question is like, how do you tell it what you want, and and how do you iterate when it gets it wrong? And and just doing zero shot, zero shot, zero shot is like really a frustrating. Um, process uh, but if you do have a way of, of iterating if you do have a way of kind of like step by step moving towards the the solution that you want and kind of like you know getting it into like okay well this is good but it's not great could be better etc um that's uh that's how you actually make that type of complex output more practical or more realistic um is that you probably won't get ever get the prompt just right even if you have like a really 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 good you know three generations from now agent, like you, you still have to put that information in, um, yeah. but you're never going to put the, in, all of the information in the first time you need to be able to, to iterate on it. And so with visual stuff, uh, I feel like the canvas, like what we were looking at, 
um, that's part of what it unlocks is that like space of iteration that space of, uh, um, you have a way of marking up the result and using that as the new prompt. Um, and that's, that's kind of new. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um it, it, multimodal prompting is, is such a brilliant concept that, uh, you know, I think it's, uh, it's going to be a norm for, for, for some things. Um, in, in my mind, you demonstrated, you know, I would say coming from Photoshop, there's this concept of layers. Um, mm -hmm. you can, you can kind of simulate layers in, in TL draw. Um, and I see like a uh, emergent property of layers in, in this kind of prompting, which is there's the UI layer and then there's the state chart layer. Um, mm. and those two things seem like pretty useful in, in, uh, spec specifying a prompt. I was just wondering if you've, if you thought a little bit about like other dimensions or other layers that would be useful in multimodal prompt. Yeah. So, uh, one thing that we've done is to bring in screenshots of other apps. Like here's stripe.com, like make it look like stripe, you know? <laughs> uh, so the sort of like, like, <laughs> Or like here's linear.com. Like let's let's do it this way. Uh, <laughs> make my DevTools website. Uh or make exactly. uh, you, sh you should just you just <laughs> you should just like give a design and ask it to make pop instead of make real. Yeah, exactly. Make it make it more make it more, make it more pop. Uh so there there's the idea of like bringing in style as like a as another um another in like part of the input. Uh, flow charts are, are absolutely useful. Uh, I mean, this is, it really just boils down to like, what would you really give a developer who you are working completely asynchronous with? You know, if you had to, uh, spec out a project, uh, and put that, print it out on paper and mail it to a developer and they were going to mail back a, a disk with an HTML file on it. <laughs> um, you know, like, what would you send? Uh, if you were sending this to the moon or something, uh, uh, so yeah, definitely like descriptions of how the state should operate and specs on that. Uh, we've, um, what else have we done? We've done flow charts. We've done screenshots of other apps. We've, uh, I think we've, we've even just pasted in code. Like, like here's a whole bunch of JSON that you can use, um, and have it just read that as the, as the input data. Uh, we can, you can point it at specific endpoints. You can say like, I want you to hit this endpoint and then display the results, you know, as, uh, as cards or as items or something like that. Uh, not, I mean, you don't even have to like wire this up. It's not like retool or anything where you, you have to register that or, you know, it's not so built into the tool. You just from an endpoint. Oh yeah. 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 I'm trying to think of, uh, what a good demo endpoint would be. We could, maybe we could do one more, uh, more to what is it like dog.co is that yeah is that dog still around? CEO is, is a good demo. yeah yeah i've used that one um i mean this this might be this might be kind of like the box with the word calculator like it might just know because <laughs> it's probably been in a bunch of tutorials oh it's in the uh, training set yeah you're yeah not, not but, sharing but uh, you know what we'll, we'll do it anyway we'll uh I'll, I'll share it and uh we'll, we'll try um, so for those who don't know dog ceo is is one of those like uh, demo APIs that uh, you just set up yeah. just because it's not offensive and uh, yeah, exactly. useful dogs. So you can, you can get dog dog. CEO. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'll try and think if there's a, there's a more complicated endpoint that we could hit. Uh, maybe, maybe while uh, I'm doing I mean, this, this if you want to think about it. Of, yeah. It gives yeah. people ideas of what to prompt and what, what can go in. Uh, I yeah. definitely didn't think about hitting endpoints just because I, it's just not in any of the demos I've seen. Yeah, uh, but, but it works. Um, let me see. I'll I'll have a big button down here. Uh, show me a dog. Okay, <laughs> so that's going to be our show me a dog button. Uh, this should be a picture of a dog. <laughs> oh, that's a great uh, dog. No, that's thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, uh, and um, <laughs> and then we'll we'll do some annotations here. We'll say like, uh, uh, okay, when when this is clicked, get a new dog. Um, yeah, there's those uh, perfect arrows uh, coming in. 
Yeah, exactly. When clicked, get a new dog from dog from. I'll just paste in this. Um, yeah, and put the result in the image. Okay, so it, it's more of a more of an instruction than you would normally. You know, I don't know. I, yeah, well, one thing it's, that uh, it's going to have to guess is uh, you know the the response format, right? Because it could be anything. This is true. Um, Let's see if it works. Well, yep. hey, all right. Oh. Well, that one worked. Yeah. <laughs> and let's see if it oh if God. it actually hit it uh, hit the uh, the right um, the endpoint in the, in the right way. So, um, dog button. Yeah. Okay. It hit the right red endpoint. Yeah. Jason dog image, uh, and then put it in. So there you go. Uh, you have That's yourself a. a JavaScript tutorial in a box, ready to go. And I think, like, I mean, we probably wouldn't do this on camera, but like, you can say, you know, like, like, use the auth token, <laughs> you know, whatever, and like, you know, go like really get, you know, right. real data back from this thing. Um, yeah, there's not no reason why it wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah. Uh, you're, so yeah, you're kind of it's really on the only OCR. yeah, Good. yeah. Well, not really because. Uh, again, what inside of the prompt for this, we do give it like an array of all the text that you've oh, put in. Wow. We, we say like, look, I know your vision isn't so good or you have a hard time reading text sometimes when it's small. Uh, cause what are like the input that, that you get is pretty wild. It's like, it takes this as a PNG, uh, and then it like, um, I can't do this in teal draw, but it, it resizes it. it. It squishes it into a, a five twelve by five twelve yeah. image or something like this, and tiles uh, it. Yeah, and then tell yeah. So it's like um, it the text, especially, can get kind of like chunked up, especially if it's small. So we we send those strings separately uh, so that it can kind of reassemble um, anything that it can't read uh, right off the bat. Yeah, it's it's this is a weird future that we've uh, <laughs> we found ourselves in. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, you know, one one layer I automatically think of is is backend, right? Like uh, as someone who hmm. has uh, works at AWS, um, I see a lot of systems diagrams, like cloud diagrams, um, entity relationship diagrams for database schema. So I wonder if like anyone's tackled extending this to backend, and then obviously the next level from that is. Uh, full stack apps where you have back in front of it. Yeah. Um, short answer is yes. Uh, there, there's someone on Twitter that was using this to generate, um, yeah, like he was doing like flow charts. I'm not a back end guy, so I don't actually know exactly what the output was. Um, <laughs> but I, I believe it was like a, like a configuration script for AWS, um, that was built off of this, like, you know, I think he just copy and pasted, uh, a, a, a Diagram that he had made in Teal Draw anyway. I said, okay, well, let's throw this at this thing and see what it comes up with. Tweaking the prompt to say, like, you, um, rather than building single page websites, you just return the JSON, you know, description of this configuration or something like that, or return a script that would set this up. Um, you could tweak it to say, like, here are, like, yeah, all the entity relationships between, um, uh, Different tables or, or items in tables, uh, and and give me the give me back the SQL, you know, could like, you know, initialization or something. So that would make all these tables and um, and set up these relationships. Uh, yeah, it's just again like the hard part is getting that information in, but we, I don't know, pictures are really good, uh, <laughs> and yeah, they, they make, if you can tell it that way, then words. it works. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Um, you are also part of, uh, so you were one of two, when, when I think about, uh, multimodal, um, viral hits in November. Uh, the other one also you had a, play, a part to play in, which is the local consistency models, uh, yeah. trend, uh, where I think you worked with Fal. Yeah. So we, uh, and actually, I do have something to show here. We we actually have a couple of things to show here. Uh, right. We connected with Fel because they used um, Tealdraw to to create a demo for uh, for their their cons uh, uh, 
LC, LCM, right? Yeah. Latency. Yeah. Um, but we took that and we, we made uh, drawfast.tldraw.com, which is uh, basically you get a these like shapes, these little draw fast shapes, um, and it puts the result, basically grabs that new image and puts it right next to it. And these are... Um, these are extremely fast. So as I'm moving things, you should oh see the goodness. image um, updating as well. Uh, oh goodness. And I think it, I think this was originally not a goat, you know, whatever. This is a, um, uh, a wise princess. I don't know. I, I play this more with my... Uh, my daughter than anything else. <laughs> I like see <laughs> what this looks like, yeah, you know, and, um, it. Oh my gosh, she, she does. And actually we had a, a lot of, uh, a lot of folks on, uh, Twitter, um, being like, this is, this is not good. Like whatever, like, cause I had a video of whatever my, my daughter drawing and, you know, she made this awesome drawing of a, a mermaid and we turned it into like this really anonymous, crappy version of like an <laughs> illustration of a mermaid and uh they're like no no the children's drawing is much more interesting and i'm like yeah 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 come on what, who, who cares of course it is but like uh, this is uh you know this is this is fun so yeah like uh, i do it, think it, you, it gets you pretty wild animation yeah? like some kind of like you could make uh some kind of it's it's a, this is almost like stop motion film um yeah yeah <laughs> I mean, yeah, we, just, we, uh, we need to do more work on consistency, <clears throat> but like this is getting there. Yeah, uh, it is a uh, car driving through a busy <laughs> market marketplace. Uh, the fun is that like you end up uh, after playing this with this for a little while, you end up like uh, getting really into the particularities of the input, like the uh, like, what can you do with a design tool? Okay, you can move things around, right? I can grab some of these and move them around. Um, and like, oh, yeah, there's a highlighter here too. So we could like, we could do some highlighting, you know, that'll that'll do stuff. Uh, and then you kind of, like, we, we couldn't help ourselves. We started making these like stories. So uh, one thing you can do is kind of click this little button and that'll make the, the drawing and the oh, yeah. result kind of on top of each other. All right. Well, then I'll move on to the other one that we uh, that we released <laughs> earlier today, which is yeah. called lens.tldraw.com. So that was drawfast.tldraw.com. Uh, and again, this is probably not making a good podcast audio, but it is uh, it, the, the crazy, image yeah. updates as soon as possible based on what the input drawing is. Um, yeah. And it is pretty hypnotic. So the... Uh, this one's a little riskier because it's live. So this this is a we took a project called Together, which is a vertically scrolling infinite drawing collaborative experience. Uh, a little bit like a chat room. As you're drawing, everything's just sort of moving up, yeah. and it just disappears off the top of the screen, never to be seen again. So it's kind of just fun to play with. Um, but by the way, one of the, the most magical chat experiences I ever had was with you. Uh, I think you were like with your daughter or something, and I was I was whatever showing off together and you started writing i started writing and we had chat uh on together yeah. at tldraw .com. And I, was, yeah. I was like what is this <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's super cool like I, you know there's inevitably someone will write like you know where are you from you know and everyone's like chiming in and, and, and talking about yeah you, you, you or like this is cool where you know yeah you can chat um yeah. so what I, i'll describe what's on the screen now which is basically we've we're taking like a screenshot of the center, uh, like a square out of the center of this chaotic vertically scrolling chat experience. And we're sending that to the, to the LCM and putting back the image based on like a prompt, uh, like, you know, desert scene or busy marketplace or uh, futuristic cityscape or something like that. And so it is updating like, you know, 10 times a second as, uh, as we go. Uh, but yeah, I would say like, it's updating surprisingly quickly, like 10 times, 10 frames per second. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I think it's now like to 32 milliseconds, basically, uh, as you go. And um, so if I draw like a big orange thing down here, it's going to kind of show up into the drawing. Um, maybe I'll, I'll do a big black one so you can see better. 
uh, like it just sort of becomes part of the the input to this prompt, um, and it is extremely hypnotic. Uh, this is again like lens.tldraw.com. Um, this isn't live, so no one should come on here and say hello, Steve, or, or anything like that. But it is uh, no, yeah, no peace life. It is, yeah, it's like this, like slow moving, um, collaborative kind of like hallucination experience, <laughs> and it just never That's ends. Fantastic. I mean, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm probably going to be funding Fal completely for the for next, uh, you know, their, their Series A or something like that. But the, uh, yeah. Are you on here, uh, Sean? Uh, I, I'm not, but maybe I should. Okay. Well, uh, whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I I have like I don't know. I have a healthy respect for like the the amount of processing that must be going on behind these things. Um, I I just uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what's me. funny yeah, is that. Oh, cool. Perfect. Someone's doing that. Oh, it looks like I can't really draw the way I normally draw until I draw. You, you blobbed it somehow. Yeah, it's everything's a little bit bigger. Um, yeah, your little smiley face. When there's 36 people, uh, it's it's kind of slow as well. So, uh, yeah. we. Um, what, what's funny is that, like, yeah, we're using like Cloudflare workers to do the... Uh, the, the, the updates and the CRDTs to do the collaboration and, you know, all this, like whatever LCM models to, 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 to populate this image or create this image. Yeah. But, um, there's also a laptop in my living room right now, uh, that is doing the actual screenshotting, uh, and sending that up. And so there's a big note that I had to write, you know, for my family <laughs> to say like, don't turn off this laptop. Don't close this laptop because, uh, this needs to be on in order for this thing to work. Uh, and yeah, so, you know, we'll, no matter how good our tech stack gets, we'll always come back to, uh, some, some laptop stuck in the corner <laughs> <laughs> that can't possibly be turned off. Uh, it's pretty fun. Yeah. I, uh, I've heard of major businesses being run that way. Uh, um, yeah, exactly. That's, There's that's a, a raspberry pie in the closet. Point. Yeah. I, I, you know, it's weird because it, it's really funny because, like, you, you know, you you are inventing your own art form. Uh, this is uh, fine art. Uh, you know, going back to your degree, um, it's just a it's definitely kind of a. Uh, you know, it's it's funny because like the output of this, like, while it is like a visual output, the output like doesn't actually matter. Like, it's gone in in sixteen milliseconds, and it's it's not coming back. Uh, and I think with all this AI stuff right now where we are with it and just how mm. completely unknown it is in terms of like, where is this useful? Uh, like the best thing that you can get out of this is like the experience. Uh, and so I think of this much more as like, you know, the thing that people will walk away from, from playing with like lens.tiltra.com uh, should be more of like that experience of, of having interacted with this thing or interacted with it, you know, among with others uh, rather than like, Oh, there's, it, it made my favorite image or something like that. So I think the, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. As a, as a former image maker, like the idea of having, um, <laughs> having like, you know, a, a, a aesthetic experience where the image is uh, a major part, but it's, it's not necessarily like the, the important part uh, or any one of these images isn't the important part. I don't know. There, there's some like, there's some uh, there's something something new feeling about this, kind of fun. Certainly, it, it, I, yes. I wish I was uh, could do a, a big critique with all the new media artist people um, <laughs> about this and about like what you know where does this where does this fit into the sort of the uh, yeah yeah like other people's well that's for, that's for them to to write and you know for you to build uh, and I think that's a that's a yeah, you know, I, I would encourage you to keep building there because uh, you're yeah. definitely not done exploring uh, with your explorations. Um, oh, thank you. Cool. But yeah. Well, so I can sort of round it out by sort of looking towards the future. Uh, you hinted a little bit uh, you're working towards TL Draw 2.0. Um, so first of all, actually, so uh, it seems like you're very focused on the core mission of Canvas. Um, hmm. And the AI stuff is is a side project for now. Um, why why not pursue it as like a 
a full, <laughs> like, why not pivot and like be an AI company, right? Yeah, like that, that's, yeah, I that's, guess I'm I, sure I mean, I, a lot of those questions. Yeah. I mean, when you, when you get something as viral as, as Teal Draw got, like, I, I think I've talked to everyone, um, certainly every, every investor, uh, and, um, okay. So I guess the way that, the way that, I, yes, we, we probably could on for something like together or that draw fast thing, uh, make a, a tiny little SaaS app, you know, give me $10 a month, play with this thing and, uh, you know, could make it, make it good. We could go in that direction. Um, there's not much of a moat around any of this stuff. And, and we're seeing that just in, uh, you know, I don't know, Gemini is going to come out in a couple of days, weeks or whatever. Um, and if it's better, then people are just going to use that until the next better thing comes along. Like it's not, there's not a lot of like unique, uh, it's not, there's nothing really defensible about like, Hey, it's an, it's a drawing app plus an LCM like model, uh, because there's going to be a lot of those models and there's going to be a lot of drawing apps. The, the thing that I think is really unique for Teal Draw, the thing that we have added that is not easily created is the canvas itself. Is that like this, uh, you know, web based, uh, hackable, extendable, uh, super refined, um, interactions and, and all that stuff, like, you know, all the thousand table stakes features that, that drive people nuts when building something like this. Like, they're all there. They're all good. Day one, you could build a really great experience, uh, whether it's AI driven or not, like using Teal Draw, um, in a way that it's just not practical to do if you're building it yourself. And especially if you're not doing like graphic stuff, there's really not that much else out there, uh, oriented towards, towards this type of thing. Um, and I think in a world where like these type of experiences are going to, or not these experiences, these types of AI driven capabilities are just going to keep coming out faster and faster. And like, you know, I don't know, next, next year is going to be wild. Like every month there's going to be some new, uh, you know, capability or something. The, the thing that I would want to see both just me as a, as, as a person and as, me as having built the business that I've built, uh, is for Teal Draw to sort of become the, the place where some of this prompting, some of these ideas are explored. Um, even if we decided to, okay, we're gonna, just going to close everything up. We're going to build a product based on this. That is, and it, maybe it's a great product, but it's, it would only be one kind of one direction, one ray kind of into this infinite space of, of, of possibility. Uh, and that, that could be successful, good, but like the idea of building the, um, I mean, we've built the, the sort of the direct manipulation, manipulation core, but there are so many, even like AI specific APIs that we could build around Teal, Teal Draw for having, you know, like a virtual collaborator, uh, or, or, or working with images in a, in a more, more rich way. Like there's just so much that we could build in order to make this the best possible place to explore not just one direction, but like, you know, many, many, many directions. Um, and I think that, that narrative gets me out of bed in the morning in, in a much more, uh, that, that gets me much more excited. Um, and I think we're also just like the team that we have and, and the, the, the tech that we have and the skills that we have, we're more the team to build that rather than like to, um, become like a SaaS product, uh, company. I'm not saying we'll never do like a, you know, pay us, 10 bucks a month and we can, you can play with our magic toy. Um, but, uh, primarily my goal is to make, uh, till draw the, either the place to explore these different models, or you might, you might think of it as like, uh, the battleground on which the, the winners will be kind of identified. Um, like right now we're using open AI for the make real thing. Um, Maybe next week we'll be using uh, uh, Gemini, and now it's now it's a question of okay, well now we have an environment in which to compare these two models um, with the same input and a very advanced form of input. Uh, but yeah, like let's see which one does better. Now nothing would make me happier than to be sort of like the the, the battlefield um, <laughs> for multimodal prompting and multimodal uh, uh, AI yeah. experience. I should also shout out Baklava as I want the open source. Um vision and uh, multimodal model. 
Um, Sick. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, so, so, I fully understand you wanna you wanna own the light cone of, of multimodal prompting. Uh, I think that that'll probably be the title of the episode. Um, I like it. What, what's uh, <laughs> what's coming up for Tail Draw two point oh? So really, the what's Tail Draw that you are using now and that I'm using are is basically 2.0. It's been in pre-release for a long time. Uh, really, the only change that's going to happen once we launch it is uh, we're going to start selling commercial licenses for it. Uh, so if you are using TealDraw in a commercial product or if you want to, then um, you know if it's if you're funded or if you have revenue, then you know you'll buy a license and I'll um, add you to our, our special list of customers. Um, so yeah, it's mostly just go to market and the, the necessary changes are on there. There will be some kind of fun changes, secret saucy changes that that launch, but nothing substantial, nothing breaking. Uh, we've put a lot of effort in the last. Like it's crazy that we've only had it open source since May of this year, uh, this this new version, right? And yeah, it's we've been very busy since then. But it is uh, it's stable, it's robust. We put it through, you know, a lot of usage and caught a lot of the the issues. So it's absolutely ready to go. Um, but I have uh, a one or two conversations with my lawyer before we uh, we turn <laughs> turn over the license and start start moving it that way. Gotcha. Um, and then, uh, maybe, uh, I think if I could get your commentary, uh, before we, we close on, on, um, just the, the competition out there. Like, um, uh, so you are not, you are, you are not the only sort of canvas tool. I, I think I get now that uh, I was going to ask about like Figma, FigJam, and like they have some AI thing that they're also doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Adobe is also working on similar things. Canvas also working on similar things, but they're all individual point solutions. Whereas you're more the open source, uh, to, yeah, uh, canvas to power all of them. Um, yeah, I feel like it's just Excala Draw. That's like the other alternative. Uh, that, yeah, that remains. I think Excala, and I like Ex- Excala Draw a lot. I, I contributed there, and you know, we we retweet each other and tease each other on on Twitter and stuff. Uh, <laughs> and uh, early on, I was copying features from them. Now they're copying features from me. So I, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, but no, it's a uh, it's. Like the collaboration space is so has so many dominant players, like um, that. I uh, I think me and Excalibur are, are tiny within that. Um, yeah, well, I, I, there's two things. One is that we made this very strange bet on using a, kind of a web canvas. That our canvas is not like an HTML element or an HTML canvas element. It's like normal React components all the way down. So if you wanted to add something interactive and have that participate in the sort of space of the canvas, uh, the way that we were doing our, our um, iframes, kind of like being able to write on top of an iframe, you can't do that in Excalibur. You can't do that anywhere. Um, that is like a very strange tech choice that we made around uh, Teal Draw that is you know, finding its home in, uh, in, a, in a few different ways. Most of the people who pick... Teal draw and approach me like the inbound that I get are folks for whom that's like the killer feature um, to be able to to put interactive widgets on the canvas using just React. Uh, yeah. The yeah, I, I'll just kind of repeat the same point that you 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 kind of suggested, which is that like no matter how good Figma's uh, like AI solution is, and I hope it's great because I love Figma and I use it. Um, it's not going to solve every possible problem in this space. It's not even going to like touch, you know, a, like, <laughs> like it can't, like none of these things. And I mean, I already had identified like, okay, uh, there was a point where like any Kanban board was like, uh, uh, was Trello, right? When you, when you talked about Kanban boards, you were talking about Trello. Kanban boards are in every productivity app now. Uh, I think the same thing is going to happen with collaborative whiteboards. It's like people like them. Uh, I'm making it easy. Uh, people are already doing it even without teal draw when it's hard, like, uh, like, yeah, that's going to become a kind of a commodity user experience in, in a lot of different products. Um, probably, you know, give me a diagram from a text prompt. Like, yeah, that is probably going to be a commodity too. Give me an image from a text prompt. Like, yeah, that's just going to be everywhere. We're just going to assume that that's, you know, it's like adding a gift to a, to a chat or something that there's no moat there. Um, I do hope that. 
Figma has an amazing AI integration, but I think the thing that it will help you do is use Figma. Um, like, it, like generating an image won't be super useful, but like generating it, uh, extend it, you know, auto complete this, uh, this, uh, design absolutely would be. And, and I hope that they <laughs> launch something amazing there. Uh, but yeah, there's, uh, I, like I said, there's just a million different directions that this stuff could go in. Uh, the canvas is just like a input device. It's, it allows a certain type of user experience. Um, and that's certainly not limited to design. That's not limited to whiteboarding. It's not limited to collaboration or anything like that. So, um, yeah, my hope is that there are those like kind of 10,000 products that, that could be made with what we're making. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a really, uh, great mission. And, uh, I, I see why you're so passionate about it. You're the right team for it. Um, okay. Uh, uh, you know, a couple of lightning round questions. Um, uh, sure. One, which is like, if you had some AI capability that you would wish for that you don't have yet, what would it be? Oh, that's a really good question. Uh, helps people to do some research. <laughs> I think probably related to, it's not quite a CRM, but like a, a human, uh, just normal relationship management. Um, this is something that I've never had a problem with I- until, uh, until I had a startup actually, where there's just a lot more people involved in my life and it's, uh, um, it's hard to keep up with them all. And I think this is probably something that like an EA, like kind of does of saying like, Hey, there's a birthday coming up or something like that. Um, but also just, you know, identifying opportunities to, to work together, uh, to, to connect or, you know, who's an expert on this thing that I'm working on. Like that doesn't always occur to me. Um, and I think there could be, I don't know. I think the, the, the value of your network, um, that even if you're good at that, you're probably only scratching the surface of like, you know, how, how you could be helping the people around you and how they could be helping you based on like the specific context of like what you're working on and the problems on your table today. Yeah. I've often wanted to build a CRM on top of Twitter, uh, because you yeah. have all the <laughs> info there, about what people are working on your past conversations with each other, um, and your shared interests, you know, like it, it should be able to search, you, you should be like at bare minimum to search it, but to proactively suggest is, uh, the next layer. Um, and yeah. I guess AI chief of staff, AI executive assistant, yeah, exactly. uh, you know, something like that. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think like some people are working on that, but the, the problem is so big that they're, they're working on like the automation piece. So like Lindy, I had at my conference, um, where they're, they're like, it's, it's, it's a virtual assistant that you can uh, trigger on your desktop or via email. Um, and it's, it will mostly deals with scheduling, um, but also helps you do a little bit of research. Um, so that, yeah, I think the agents feel will progress there. We might take 10 years to do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can wait. Uh, it's all good. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then finally, um, uh, advice for founders, like what, what has helped you the most, uh, as, as a founder, you know, you're two years into your journey. Yeah. I think the, uh, so this, this kind of comes a little bit out of, uh, like what you learn in art school, uh, type of thing. Um, but yeah, uh, but one thing is that, that basically like uh, when you're a studio artist or you're in a studio, whatever, there's no external constraints. You just kind of are running on, well, what do I feel like working on? Uh, and the further you get away from like, what do I feel like working on? Kind of like, the worse your work becomes. So having like a really good uh, feeling for that sort of desire and, and being able to respect and follow that that desire as like a, um, because it's not arbitrary. Is that like, if if you really, really feel like working on, um, on, on, on a thing, like it, that might be the sort of the, the tip of a very complex uh, iceberg of analysis of like the field or like what people are talking about or, or something, uh, that you uh, directions and market or something like that. Like, I don't know. I think with, <laughs> with Teal Draw and with as, as a founder on this, um, the thing that I've tried to do and the, I've tried to preserve is like the, uh, uh, being able to prioritize based on like what is most interesting right now. Uh, and that is, that is true for, 
uh, what code we write and like what features we work on. That's true for like which partners we, you know, we spend time with in terms of who is using TL draw, uh, the types of problems that we want to solve, like using your own sort of sense of what's interesting as a filter uh, and what you want to work on, like what sounds like a fun thing to work on right now as a filter is not, it's not naive. Um, and it, it can be kind of part of your, your secret sauce. And I think it's, uh, I think a lot of early founders are encouraged against that and to, to be working backwards from a certain outcome and all that. Um, and yeah, you, you do have to have to do that. You have to put that into the, um, into the mix as well, but, um, you know, be sure that you're, you're picking the best parts, um, out of that mix. I don't know the parts that you want to work on. Yeah. Well, I mean, what's the point of doing this if you don't have, have, uh, have some fun in yeah. curiosity. <laughs> the worst Which case, you'll, you'll you build something that you team. love. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then, like, good things can come out. Good things can absolutely good come out of like, uh, you had chasing, an 8,000 uh, percent increase in your followers or something. Dude, <laughs> not, should I put this on camera? I'll, I'll share my screen. We'll look at my, uh, my Twitter analytics. And it's on you your sub stack. Yeah. yeah sure. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, it is. It is. I need to update that image. I've done it once already. Uh, yeah, if you if you're a, if you're a Substack reader, the Teal Draw Substack, seventy two hours into this big make real virality explosion, I I sat down and wrote a blog post, and I uh, I wanted to at least capture that that vibe um, of what it felt like in the middle of that that hurricane. Uh, yeah, so it's it's a pretty fun one. It's, it's good to read fun. back. Uh, well, I'm sure it's not the last time we'll see you do something crazy viral. Uh, I'm sure that a lot of people will be exploring TL Draw. I hope a lot of people, honestly, um, one thing I'm thinking about is like in, embedding TL Draw into my, my input box. Like why can't, why can't TL Draw be like, you know, part of the, the, the input? Hey, I'm, I'm talking to, uh, the, the good <laughs> folks over at OpenAI tomorrow. <laughs> Fingers Ooh. crossed. Maybe we, uh, maybe we get it in, inside of a chat GPT or something. Cause yeah, like I don't know. Oh, I want to. Okay, I need to do any more Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, you uh, could, like no. what you want to like take a drawing or take a photo and then annotate it or like you know just, just sketch like, something out. You should be able to do that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just a good. It's just a good thing. Uh, yeah, the the pe people cry out for it. I uh, <laughs> can't failed it fast enough. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for uh, inspiring the rest of us. Uh, thank you for everything. And I'm sure we'll, see, we'll hear from, more from you over the, over the next few years. Uh, so uh, thanks. Thanks for your time. Awesome. Thank you for your time.